It's Saturday night, December 10th, 2016. I have the zither here that my friend Hyla Willis gave to me. Which she got at a flea market. The zither has a separating base from the sound body. I put some tape on it. I did this quite some time ago. But today what I did was is I put on information about the tuning. I know that there are two typical tunings the Munich tuning and the Viennese tuning. Now, there are two different tunings to the zither. There is a Viennese tuning, which I have, and that is A, D, G, G, C. And then there is a Munich tuning, which goes A, A, D, G, C. Now, the Munich zither players can't play mine, and I can't play theirs. It's a funny setup. All the other strings are the same. And that the melody notes in the Munich tuning are A4, A4, D4, G3, C3. That means these fretted notes here. Unlike a guitar, they go from highest to lowest. Now, before when I tuned this, I uh, didn't really find myself capable of tuning it the way that I thought I was supposed to tune it which may have been the Viennese, it may have been the Munich way, I'm not really sure. So I tuned it to D, D, G, D, G. I won't get into all of these. The accompaniment notes, as they're known. The accompaniment being the first octave, and the bass notes being the second octave. This has one string that would be ordinarily called the contrabass string, but usually there would be more of those, so it's a little odd in that way, perhaps a little deficient. There are 25 accompaniment strings and 5 melody strings, fretted strings. I think the Viennese tuning appeals to me a little bit more because the melody strings don't repeat at all. In the Munich tuning, the first two, meaning the two highest strings, are A4 and A4, and then it's D4, G3, and C3, whereas in the Viennese one, it's A4, D4, G4, G3, C3, so there's a little bit more variety there. This is mm, 73 zither, and I'm going to start off by reading the Wikipedia entry, or at least snatches of it. Zither, German, is a class of stringed instruments. The word zither is a German rendering of the Latin word cithera. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. From which the modern word guitar also derives. I do have one very, very short excerpt from a guitar solo online that was from a band called Something That Dissolves the Shadow of Something That Was Next to Something That Combusted Twice Once, when we performed on November 4th, 1989, Evie, era Bulgari, at a place called Displace in Baltimore. This was our final gig. <laughs> That band had myself, Neil Feather, John Burnt, and John Sheehan in it. Historically, it has been applied to any instrument of the cittern family or an instrument consisting of many strings stretched across a thin, flat body similar to a psaltery. This article describes the second variety. I'll de be dealing with both varieties tonight. Now, the accompaniment strings... All the other strings are the same. ...are also different in the Munich and Viennese tunings. They start a fifth apart and pretty much seem to stay a fifth apart throughout the entire thing. In the case of this instrument, the strings stop at 30, so these contrabass notes are more or less irrelevant. But in the case of an ordinary concert zither, the strings continue all the way up until 38 or 42, so they go through an entire octave plus one. <laughs> In the case of the Munich tuning of the Alpine zither. The Alpine zither has a set of longer strings that comes off here, and then there's a sort of extended neck 
which supports those longer strings. This doesn't have that, so this is a concert zither. Best I could determine is that it's a 19th century German concert zither, possibly. Maybe a Quint Mermaid zither, possibly. Maybe by Anton Kindle, circa 1880 or 1898. I'm certainly not an expert on these things, so that's just my best guess. Third Man is often described as being the movie that made the zither most famous in the 20th century. And here they're referring to a zither player named Anton Karas. It says, for the third man, Karas tuned the zither a semitone lower, giving a particularly distinctive tone to the contrabass strings. The resulting lower string tension also enabled Karas to perform an expressive vibrato on the fingerboard melody strings. Film director Cal Reed, on whose oak kitchen table the music was performed, described the sound as gritty and dirty, perfectly reflecting the atmospheric mood of the film. And I'm going to play an excerpt of Garas playing the third man theme. Another thing that I've done here is I've put a chart right underneath where the ends of the strings are that uh, tells me what notes I should tune them to if I were using the Munich or the Viennese tuning. And in the case of the 30th note or the 25th of the accompaniment unfretted notes, ordinarily it would be a contrabass tuning to F2, but I modified that to say or E flat 2 which is only a whole step lower, but which would then make it so that it would be an octave, would be a continuation of the octave pattern that already exists in the accompaniment, because the accompaniment goes through in the first octave, the circle of fifths, in the case of both styles of tuning, and then goes to an octave lower, again, for the bass notes. So it would be logical for it to go to an octave lower rather than to the F2 in the case of the, of the concert zither that stops right there, which most of them wouldn't, but in this case this one does. And that's what happens in the case of the Viennese tuning. It's possible that if I were to try to do the Munich tuning, I would tune the lowest note to an E-flat 2 instead of to an F2, but I chose to not have the tuning at all. to see what the best way of tuning it is now. Zithers are played by strumming or plucking the strings, either with the fingers, sometimes using an accessory called a plectrum or pick, such as this snazzy one right here. <laughs> Sounding the strings with a bow or with varieties of the instrument like the centaur or cimbalum by beating the strings with specially striped shaped hammers. Like a guitar or lute, a zither's body serves as a resonating chamber sound box, but unlike guitars and lutes, the zither lacks a distinctly separate neck assembly. The number of strings varies from one to more than 50. In the case of this one, there are 30 strings total, which is a little odd. Back in the day when I was a folk singer, folk musician, and played the mostly 12-string acoustic guitar, fiddle, harmonica, piano, and sang. I covered quite a few Leonard Cohen songs, and almost all of them were in 6-8, so I learned a lot of 6-8 things from him, including fingerings like this. Let's see whether I can make it.
that's my very brief and very differently tuned Leonard Cohen tribute. In my use of the word zither, I'm referring to any stringed instrument in which the strings are parallel to the sounding body, as opposed to a harp in which the strings are perpendicular to the sounding body, which is approximately correct, jives with these other things that are said online, that potentially puts instruments like the violin in the zither family, but the violin family is apparently considered to be separate from the zither family, although they are both chordophones. One other instrument here, which I'm throwing into the zither family, which it does really belong in, although not in the second sense of the zither family as indicated on the Wikipedia page, and that is the mandolin. I got this mandolin from a pawn shop for $50. I've always liked playing with a tremolo technique, and I've only used this for one project. That was for Tex Mix Giddy Up Americana. <laughs> like a violin. So it's uh, in fifths, G, D, A, E. I had to tune it again today because it hadn't been tuned for a year. Here it says the earliest known surviving instrument of the Zivler family is a Chinese kukin fretless instrument found in the tomb of Marquis Yi of Zheng, dating from 433 BC. Similar instruments along with design were developed over the following centuries. For example, the Japanese silk strong koto, the sitter of Indonesian gamelans, the kwanun or kanun of the Middle East, the baliha, a tube zither of Madagascar, which I had one of and no longer have, which I regret. I've got an electronic tuner, which I basically never use. I usually tune things by my piano, but I know that my piano is out of tune right now. I have a tuning key for the auto harp that I'm going to tune later, but I don't have one that fits this zither. So what I'm going to do is try using my Allen keys, none of which seem to be small enough. Now I know I've tuned this with something before, so I must have an appropriate tool for it somewhere. Apparently it's not this Allen key, so I'm going to stop this video camera for a moment and see whether I can find the right tool for this. That's enough of that. Cross is using a thumb pick, which I'm not going to use tonight. And as would most uh, conventional zither players, he's uh, fretting with his left hand, thumb picking the five melody strings with his right hand, and playing the bass notes with his left hand. That actually turned out to be more of a difficult problem to resolve than I was expecting. Somewhat to my surprise, these tuning pegs are rectangular. This is the length. This side is longer than this side. All of the tuning keys that I have are for square pegs, and none of them fit this anyway. And I don't know whether this is how I did it before or not, but I can use vice grips, although someday it would be nice to come up with the appropriate device for it. Now, let's say that I were to try to tune this instead of to the tuning that I came up with. Let's say I were to try to tune it to the uh, Munich tuning, because that seems to be what this is more likely strung for, if only because the top highest notes are the same string thickness, which makes me believe that they're more likely intended to be A4 and A4 rather than in the Viennese style. Let's see what note I get if I play this highest string right now. Well, 
uh, it's appearing to tell me that it's a, a B, and I want it to be an A. I don't know whether I want it to be an A higher. I don't want to overstretch these strings, which is probably why I tuned it to D in the first place. Now it's giving me a D sharp, and that's a good tension on the string. So I'm going to go hit an A4 on the piano and compare that to where I need to go with this, either higher or lower. Da now the <coughs> A4 is definitely higher than this. This would be the A440. So far I'm only up to F, and I really feel like the string is going to break. Well, it hasn't broken yet. It's telling me it's F sharp. Now G. Still G. No, no, of course it's jumping around here. It's telling me it's A sharp now. It's telling me it's G. going. Not saying G sharp. I'm almost there. Still saying G sharp, even though it seems pretty obvious that it went up considerably higher than that. Alright, well it's somewhat consistently telling me now that it is A, but it's also telling me that it's B and G sharp. And this is going to be a very slow process. When I pluck the highest string, it's now telling me that it's G sharp. When I pluck the second highest string, it's also telling me that it's G-sharp, even though it just told me a moment ago that it was A. I doubt that it's going out of tune that quickly, but maybe it has. Okay, hypothetically the top two of the fretted strings are now tuned to A440. So far, so good. I did manage to tune this more or less correctly to the Munich tuning. It's probably already gone out of tune again. This is not in the greatest shape. All right, I surprised myself by having more spare guitar strings than I expected. I looked up what the high G string is on auto harp as in terms of string thickness. I had to replace one of the auto harp strings that I was working on, and alanhorvath.com was very useful were telling me what the proper string gauge of them should be. And I got an answer of 0 0.016. Not all of these sets of guitar strings identify the strings in terms of thickness. Most of them just say whatever, first, sixth, etc. But I did find two sets here that came close. This set number 210, Extra Light of Electric Jazz Nickel Round Wound Guitar Strings by Dequisto Signature Series has a 0 .015 string, and then this Dean Markley Electric 2503A has a 0 .017 string. 
I'm going to go for the 0 .017, and that would be presumably the thinnest string in this group here, since it is the smallest number. Well, the funny thing for me about doing this sort of thing is that I tend to change the materials that I'm working with with great frequency. So there was a time, for example, when I was a guitarist, and I practiced a fair amount, and learned scales and went through all the usual blah blah, but I left that behind about 44 years ago, even though I occasionally do play guitar now and then, for no particularly good reason, I might even do it today. Guitar solo. I do have some minor facility. At one time I suppose I was a reasonably good guitarist and I can probably still whip out a few licks that aren't necessarily that interesting. But that aren't the worst thing in the world either. I stopped playing guitar though because I found it very boring. I've never really played the zither or the auto harp, so that's a part of today's experiment. This is probably too fine even for it to actually be seen in this shot except as a vaguely vibrating silver thing there. I've never strung a string on an auto harp before. It looks like you just drop this end with the protuberance on it down in there to get caught underneath the tuning end. Although it may be that you're really not supposed to use guitar strings because I see that the winding doesn't actually fit in here that well. I think it'll probably still work. I took a non-broken auto harp string out to see what the base of it is like. And as you can possibly see in this shot, it's got the capture hoop, whatever the correct name of it, it might be here. The winding is very small that goes after that. Now if you compare that winding to the winding on the guitar string that I chose, you'll see that the winding is much more substantial on this. It basically goes all the way up to here, which would make it difficult to fit in the slot that's available in the auto harp. But I might not be able to use this string. I'm going to see whether one of the other guitar strings has less of a winding there, but it's unlikely because in the case of guitars, this would be fine. Okay, I predictably had to compromise a bit there. The 0 0.017 and the 0 0.015 strings wouldn't work because of the winding. So I picked a double lock twist Swedish steel Dean Markley electric acoustic 0 0.013 plain guitar string. It also didn't work because of the winding, but at least it fit through the slot. So whenever I tried to tune it to the correct pitch, it would slip. So what I ended up doing was tuning it an octave lower, which isn't that great either. Hypothetically, it's the same pitch as this other G that I'm plucking here. But you can hear the looseness of the string. I did have to replace the low F2 string with uh, a diameter 0 0.059 sixth E string bronze for guitar. And then I replace the A2 string with a 0 0.04 nickel wound. And then I replace the G2 string with a 0 0.049 heavy gauge bronze string. Well, that's more or less successful, but I should probably eventually put the right strings on there. But those will work. So back to selections off of YouTube. Next up will be a tutorial by a woman named Lottie Landel, which is an interesting indication of 
what YouTube can be like. Lottie Lando appears to be a sufficiently proficient, albeit conventional, zither player. And she tells us that she doesn't really play those lower strings. So one does find out pretty quickly that her technique is extremely limited, but still, the rubes would be impressed. And she's certainly better than I am, so I'm going to play her zither tutorial. I should say that I'm not a zither player at all. I've never really played this instrument at all. I've tuned it three or four times now. And I'm going to play it tonight for the purposes of this mm, 73. Hello, Chris Scott. Here we go again. Lottie Lundell once again with my concert center. I have promised somebody that I will show a little bit more of how this thing is being played. I have told you it's not easy. I have also told you I've got 38 strings, but I only use 28 because the others I just don't need. A scale goes in the C scale. All the fingers have their certain positioning. major chords. So for example, the tuning might be E, A, E, A, C sharp, E, which would be an A major chord. However, for a tour that I went on with the official project in 1992, I changed the tuning to F sharp, G, A, A sharp, C sharp, D sharp. And the reason why I did that was because we had multiple pieces with not really unusual scales, but there was an octatonic scale, which would have been uh, C, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G, A, and then we'll say A sharp for simplicity's sake, and back to uh, C again. the harmonic scale has a minor sixth but a major seventh so that there's a jump from the sixth to the seventh of a minor third instead of a major second. Having this tuning enabled me to play all of the strings open but also play those pieces with the slide. So then you have to pick out, okay, in the C, in case it's not obvious, she's using the Viennese tuning, so not the Munich tuning, which is what I'll be using. I play the zither very well, I know that, but my theory is not good. I have always been a bit lazy learning the proper theory of the zither playing, but I'm managing. I am managing, okay. So it is a G, C, E. Put your finger on a G, for example. That was 
was my very first little number that I learnt. I don't know why this electronic tuner isn't responding. That all sounds fairly in tune to me. Of course, I'm getting incredibly sick of this process. I've been at it since about, uh, I don't know, uh, two and a half hours, a little over two and a half hours. This is probably, in some respects, not the best camera shot. My face doesn't show, but my face shows in so many movies that it's really not that important that it show in everything. Let's start with A440. Which is probably... Well, I managed to break the high G string while I was tuning it, but I was slightly more successful with tuning it today than I was yesterday using the piano. So some of the chords don't sound too off. So some of the chords don't sound too off. Let's start off with an A minor. Pass. One thing I sort of always found easy, you have two strings with your forefinger, leave out two, pick out one with your middle finger. Good. Then you have the G chord, but you have also a G7. musicians you will be able to to pick that up quite easily okay enough of that all right now laraji who some of you might remember as having had a record out on one of brian eno's series is shown in a still playing what looks like hammered auto harp so basically he's just using an auto harp as a zither in other words he may not be depressing the keys down but this is just a still so I don't really know what he's doing, but we'll play a little bit of Laraji's Sun Zither cut here. Obviously there's some sort of effect on it. It sounds like phasing, but I don't know what it is exactly. Alright, next up, the auto harp, which 
I've explained is really incorrectly called auto harp. It should be called an auto zither. This was loaned to me by Ohila Willis and it had been her grandfather's. I've never had much respect for the auto harp because basically it's got the pre-created chords for the lazy player. I'm not even holding it in the right way. I should be strumming it with my right hand and playing the chords with my left hand holding it upright, but I'm not going to do that here. It's not really necessary. Paizo, contact mic. Next up is traditional Chinese music, Fisherman's Song at Dusk, Chinese zither performance. In this case, this zither looks somewhat like a koto. This player is using what looks like six finger picks that are just picks that are taped with white tape onto her thumb, forefinger, and middle fingers of each hand. That's interesting. I wonder if that's traditional or her particular technique. She's bending the notes by pressing them down with her left hand to the left side of the movable bridges. As usual, I'm whipping through these things. I really like this metal plectrum, this triangle-shaped metal plectrum, but it's a bit noisy. So I'm going to try switching to a plastic one. That was fun to actually now play it in the correct position. I've still got the tuning key on here. play that instrument. So next up is real German Bavarian music zither Oktoberfest Neuschwanstein Aufbrauhaus, which just has as its visuals a series of stills including Ludwig of the various famous one of his famous castles that was built much to the financial ruination of Bavaria at the time. And this is by Rudy Nobel. Big 
next piece is called First Experiment with the Hungarian Sitara. That was uploaded by Matteo Bossi, who is apparently the person who's also playing the Hungarian Sitara, which is substantially different from the other zithers that we've seen so far. interesting thing about this is the way it's threaded. Because the frettings look as if uh, it was to create intervals anywhere from a minor second to a minor third. So maybe this is a good time to move on to Rudy Nobel. I'll play a little bit of this record. It's called Zither! one up is Colin Offord, Austronesian Driftwood Zither Experimental Instrument. The notes say the vessel was Colin's contribution to the Austronesian International Art Award, Taitung Art Museum, Ta Iwin, which could be a typo, but I'm not sure. Built from burnt and carved driftwood, Colin performed in Dulan Sugar Factory Warehouse and the Art Museum throughout August 2014. Driftwood neck or body. There's a lot of bounce with these sticks, which look like they're not much larger than chopsticks, maybe, but they aren't chopsticks. They're bigger than that. So he's using the bounce as a tremolo. I got three CDs out of the library in honor of tonight. Rujindral Metra de Linanga. Musique de l'Ancienne Cour de Rwanda. So this is chanting and cithara. Specifically this one. Oh, yeah. 
in a group with me called the official project for simplicity's sake we changed our name every time we played in this instance that i'm about to bring up we were the official june 16th 1991 ev something or another beach party sand fleas and we were playing for a cable tv show in ocean city maryland so i've brought up an example of neil feather playing an instrument of his invention called the Apex Roto Zither. I've got a cue to the little section where he demonstrates that instrument. <laughs> That's the wildest stuff we've seen, man. What is that all about? What's with the, there's all this deal here with the, with the wheel, man. Is this driving? Well, this is, this is made up of a uh, Apex mangle iron, with just a chassis, the Daiwa shore fishing reel, a uh, film editing take up reel. No way. Some uh, lawnmower parts here. Whoa. Some more sewing machine parts here. A lamp part here. And we got a croquet ball, croquet, and a, and a, and a fishing rod, and a and a Pontiac uh, pre Ralph Nader Pontiac steering wheel here, because it's got this door knob. That's really interesting, man. What's it called? What is this called? What, what do you this? call it? This is called the Apex Rota Zither. Are you the inventor? By the way, this is this is uh, impartially funded by the. Uh, new Forms Regional Grant Program by the Painted Bride Art Center in Philadelphia. I need to plug them because hey, they made okay. it happen. Okay, you're the inventor of this. You made this. And what's yeah. your name? My name's Neil Feather. Neil Feather, okay. What happens if you change the location of all these guitar pickups? How does it change the sound? Well, this one, if I put the motor on for this, there shouldn't be anything happening, so that is your TV that's wrong. This goes like this. Let's see if you turn this up. That's way cool, man. All right, way cool. So, so, dude, when you made this, what were you thinking about? What, what purpose does this? This is obviously a musical instrument and a very original one. And this, does this go like, you know, you know, is this better with other instruments or solo or what? You know. Uh, well, there's actually another instrument that it's designed after, which is called the contraption, which has 16 strings and hand cranks. And uh, I decided that when I made it 10 years, the contraption 10 years ago, that it was way too complicated. Yeah. And I would never do that again. So I, don't so blame I like to right. break promises to myself, so I decided to make one that was way more complicated. And this is here. The only thing left to do on this is to mount the extra sewing machine right here, which right. will have another pickup on that, so it'll have more motors. And yeah, absolutely. Do you ever tune it? I noticed you got a lot of guitar tuning pegs on it. Yeah, you can tune it as it, as it goes. It sounds like it's tuned kind of, or is that just random? No, nothing's random about this. Okay. This is all with a purpose here. Yeah, I mean, well, it sounds kind of like it. I mean, it could be a random effect, or maybe you tuned it to be a specific. Well, type I, of vibe. I tuned it. I tuned it during uh, during its playing. So basically, it's it's uh, uh, you know it's planned to a certain extent. 
Okay. But it's right. planned by ear. All these things, all my right. instruments are tuned by ear. Okay. Can you show us some Rad. Stuff? Yeah, what's with this whole sure. deal over here? That's probably my favorite instrument of Neil's. There's only a few seconds left on this tape, so I'll give a quick recap. I finally found the rectangular tuning key for this uh, concert zither. Okay, now that we've gotten an entire continent out of the way, of course I'm kidding. This CD is called Resting Place of the Mists, and it involves a playing of the Valija, which is these two other things here. Like I said, I had one, but unfortunately the place where I was living got flooded, and uh, it either got destroyed or I got disgusted somehow and threw it away or gave it away to somebody, I'm not really sure what. All three of these are Valijas. That's interesting. New Valija and Moravni music from Madagascar. This first piece is called, or is by a group called Akam Valija, and it's called Salama Nareo. Excerpts here. That didn't amount to much. Next CD is called Bamboo on the Mountains. Moo Highlanders from Southeast Asia and the US. This looks like it also has a Valija in it, which must be, in some respects, a pretty hard instrument to play. The strings are all around the. Although I'm not really sure that that's what that is right there because I can't see whether there are strings on it or not, but the, st the strings are all the way around the cylinder, so it must be a matter of using both hands to pluck all of the strings and still keep it upright somehow. Maybe by holding it on the floor or whatever, I'm not sure. Obviously that is not a zither. Track 24, however, does have a tube zither. Otherwise known as a Valija.
like they're using some sort of technique where they cap the top of the tube. This is the cassette that I publish of what was basically the premiere of Neil's instrument that I showed footage of earlier, the Apex Rotozither. The name of the tape is Cassette Z, the official August 23rd, 1991 EV Bug House Apex Rotozither Auxiliary. It was a trio, myself, John Burnt, and Neil Feather. wasn't all Neil's instruments. Actually, I have my erector set percussion there and other things. Even played alto sax. What do you know? Sir Al Ackerman was alive at the time. And living in Baltimore, so he must have moved there shortly before this session in 1991, summer of 1991. Neil Feather's instrument should be called the Roto. Valiha.